chapter number 4. Verse number 23. From the Amplified Version of the Bible. When you have it, let us please acknowledge the word of God by standing if we are able. Matthew chapter number four, verse 23. And he went throughout all Galilee teaching in the synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people, demonstrating and revealing that he was indeed the promised Messiah. Amen, amen. Demonstrating and revealing that he was indeed True. the promised Messiah. You may be seen. Amen. Preach, Bishop. For a few moments, I want to dialogue with you from the subject. A civil Christ. A civil church. Preach, Bishop. A civil Christ. A civil church. As people who have by faith experienced the new birth. And now we live holistically with a made up mind to be determined to live for Christ. As we strategically build up the walls of the king. We understand, due to our positioning in him, that the word of God, per Psalm 119, 105, declares God's words are a lamp uh -huh. unto our feet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the light unto our path. Sister Sue, this lets us know that Jesus is our divine example. His divine example is to us divine instruction. Are y'all with me? Not only was Jesus an example a divine instruction, but he engaged ministry with divine intention. The divine intention of God is given for a divine direction, for a believer's divine process that gets us to our divine purpose. Furthermore, as we examine the ministry of Jesus, we know that he has given us the blueprint or divine instruction. And the blueprint, Reverend Carter, is to show us how to behave as we implement the divine instructions within our divine process. Are yeah. y'all with me? Slow walk, slow walk. As we seek to mimic the patterns of Jesus, uh -huh. as 
we go forth teaching about the kingdom of God, preaching the good news, and being loving channels of healing. We understand as we observe the ministry of Christ that Jesus engaged ministry in Galilee. And as he dealt with the household of faith, he engaged people with a sense of civility. That means Jesus knew how to act. Civility is defined as formal politeness and courtesy in behavior and in speech. My brothers and my sisters, if I could be so bold on today, the church of the 20th and 21st century has lost its civility. And it needs to be improved. Tell your neighbor a civil Christ means a civil church. As a collective, even though we walk by faith, and even though we strive to worship him in spirit and in truth, and even though we try to dwell together in unity, what we lack and what the world sees in us Amen. is a deficiency in our form of politeness and yeah. our lack of courtesy and behavior and in our speech. What the world is witnessing, Elder Kim, is a church that says they love God, but are failing to love and cooperate with one another. Yeah. A civil Christ means a civil church. Let me remind all of us what Jesus tells the teachers of the law is most important in Mark 12. First, we are to love the Lord, our God, with all our hearts, Amen. with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. If we are going to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, we must be committed to loving one another the way we want to be loved and treating each other the way that we want to be treated. Amen. Many times, even when we serve, we offer ourselves opportunities and graces and mercies that we refuse to bestow on our brothers and our sisters. Sometimes, not in this church, but we're even willing to engage in activities that we know contradict scripture to push our own personal agendas and simply make ourselves feel better about the lives or the situations that we find ourselves in daily. I want us to understand that being civil with one another while carrying the bloodstained banner is essential to the growth of the church. A civil church strives to interact with one another in holiness, honesty, respect, and by being considerate of one another. This interaction built on holiness promotes growth. It promotes harmony. It promotes stability within the household of faith. I want us to understand when we treat one, one another right or in a civil way, people are more likely to join us, join with us, 
cooperate with us, collaborate with us, and work toward a common goal. And that common goal is building up the kingdom of God for the Lord. Reverend Slater, it leads to the development of a strong, reproducing, and faithful disciple. A civil Christ means a civil church. Matthew, the apostle and evangelist who wrote the first gospel in our New Testament. He wrote it for the Jewish people who had become followers of Jesus Christ. He wanted his audience to know Jesus was the Messiah that God promised that saved all people. Yeah. Matthew's Gospel, my brothers and my sisters, makes it clear that Jesus is the fulfillment of everything said by the prophets of the Old Testament. Matthew is also the only evangelist, Deacon Grant, who shares the Navy attitudes with his students. His gospel faithfully reports how Jesus described who will truly be blessed by the kingdom and the attitudes and actions that are required for those to who follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. We understand that Matthew was very different than the other apostles. See, he wasn't a popular man. And many people felt he was unworthy to be chosen as a follower of Jesus. They felt he was unworthy right because he was employed by the Romans yes, sir. as a tax collector. And Jews considered tax collectors traitors mm -hmm. because they would tack on a little extra to the tax for themselves. When we look at the text, specifically the Amplified Translation of the text, we understand that Jesus has come to Galilee of the Gentiles. Matthew describes the people in Galilee of the Gentiles as people living in darkness. And we know this means spiritual darkness. And Matthew also describes them as living in the land of the shadow of death. The text goes on to let us know that he went throughout all of Galilee of the Gentiles. He taught and he preached in their synagogues which means he was a guest preacher. Yes. He healed every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. But the Amplified Version, Reverend Slater, gives us a little more information. It says he healed the people and he demonstrated and revealed that he and he alone was indeed the promised Messiah. Yeah. If we look at Judaism, Messiah is defined as the anointed one. According to the Torah 
And the Torah in Judaism was the law of God. Revealed to Moses and recorded in the first five books of the Old Testament. We call that the Pentateuch. But according to the Torah, he gives us, it gives us two key attributes of the anointed one. The anointed one is a bringer of peace. Are y'all with me? And because he is a bringer of peace, he has the ability to unite humanity. Yeah, my brothers and my sisters, as children of God, we are supposed to be bringers of peace that aid in the unification in the body of Christ. Just like Jesus, we are to go we are to teach. We are to preach and serve as vessel of healing. But when we go, we must be bringers of peace. Yes. Not instigators of chaos. All right, and we are those who stand and bring the spirit of unity. Those who act civilly ultimately encourage and promote in a peculiar sense of community and belonging in the church. My brothers and my sisters, it is our mandate to follow the example or the blueprint that Jesus has provided. We have to have the mind, attitude, and actions of Christ yes. as we go, as we teach, and as we heal. We must be equipped to do what needs to be done when it comes to bring light to a dark place. However, not only must we, we be willing to go, uh -huh. not only must we be equipped to serve, but in the midst of it all, we must conduct ourselves in a civil manner as bringers of peace, as we encourage one another. And as we take the gospel to those who are lost. My brothers and my sisters, we do this by being respectful. By being courteous in our interactions with one another and with those who we are ministering to. Amen. In the midst of us being bringers of peace, understand it includes a wide range of behaviors, attitudes, and values that promote positive interactions, mutual respect, and a peaceful coexistence. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, being civil can be observed in various settings. But the most important setting that the believer must be civilly, whether right is in the house of God. When we as believers choose to be civil with each other, as we serve with each other, I want y'all to listen to me closely. It's more likely, Brother Leon, that we're going to have cooperation, mm -hmm. collaboration, and a greater sense of unity and harmony that leads to a stronger bond yeah. and a greater sense of family in the household of faith. 
And as we do this, the church will begin to gain the momentum as we remove sinfulness and civility sets in, creating a more favorable atmosphere to usher in the light. A civil Christ means a civil church. Amen. With all of that said, as disciples who are striving to be disciplers, what are the steps? we can take to cultivate a mindset of civility in the church of the 21st century. Number one, when it comes to being civil, as we engage discipleship, listen to me closely, we must intentionally and holistically practice what we preach. We must understand as those who are discipling others while we are still being discipled that not only must we teach Jesus but we must teach believers that civil behavior is mandatory and it is a byproduct of holiness. However, in doing this, we must understand that the principles that we preach and teach must first be implemented by us. As we do ourselves to model Jesus in his civility, his compassion, and his consistency in our own lives. Disability, compassion, and consistency is a byproduct of our reverence for God. And every day, we should be practicing living holy inside the church and outside the church. Point number one, we need to practice what we preach. But not only must we practice what we preach. Point number two, when it comes to encouraging a civil environment, in order for the discipleship process to go forth, we must encourage godly communication. And as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we must do our, I want you to hear this. We must do our best to have godly interpretation of that communication. All right. And a word-based, Holy Ghost-filled response to the communication received. And those who disciple others. While being discipled, we must encourage all believers to openly communicate while working together for the common goal of making disciples of the lost, while we support and help each other. We need communication without any backbiting, gossiping, or excessive anger. Point number one, we need to practice Amen. what we preach. Amen. Point number two, we need godly communication. Amen. And last but not least, when it comes to creating a civil environment where all seekers can flourish as disciples, we must encourage and promote appreciation and awareness of community 
and family with other believers. We must be family inside of HMBC and outside of HMBC. All right, Al. Understand, if we practice inside the church, we'll know how to do it. Outside of the church, as those who are discipling others, and we should be discipling others, we must encourage and promote an atmosphere of community and share responsibility within the family of faith. We are to encourage one another and love on one another as we work for the common goal to make disciples and to build up the kingdom of God. We are to support one another. We are to love one another. And even when it's inconvenient for us, we need to be willing to help one another. When we support and help one another, yeah. we don't do it looking for a handout. Amen. We do it, Sister Sue, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. When we feel uneasy and misfortune has us back, HMBC, I want you to be encouraged because the joy of the Lord is our strength in the midst of serving God and serving one another we may be tempted to act out of godly character remember my brothers and my sisters the joy of the Lord is our strength sometimes we get weary in the midst of our trouble and in the midst of life struggles I want you to count on our joy because you got this because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Sometimes we just get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Embrace the fresh wind of hope because the joy of the Lord is our strength. See the songwriter says our love a lonely idol. I was a sinner too. And I heard a voice from heaven said, There is work to do. So I took the master's hand and I joined the Christian band and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Do I got my folks up in here? Up in here, even though you're dealing with struggles, you're on the battlefield. Even though you get tired, you are on the battlefield. Sometimes you get weary, weary, wounded, and tired, but you're on the battlefield for the Lord. And because we are on the battlefield, we can rejoice in the civility of Jesus. We can press on a little while not longer, exemplifying the compassion of Jesus. We can go boldly when no man or woman has gone before. Sister Patty, we can stand firm with the courage of Jesus. We can make an impact in Central Iceland with the consistency of Jesus. We can worship him up in hope and hope that he the spirit in spirit and in truth with unity because we are committed to Jesus Christ. We can fellowship in the communion of his love. We can walk in right relationship with our God. We can walk hand in hand with our brothers and our sisters. See the song.
Almighty Savior, blessed Redeemer, my Savior and my Lord. Sometimes we get disconnected, but long to be on the Lord. We seek to walk as one in the guidance of Jesus Christ, your direction and your holiness. We simply won't deny as we seek to be better for the cause of Jesus Christ. Your holiness, my Lord, we won't deny. We long to live and minister like Christ in a cruel and unfaithful world. We are going higher on today. Jesus. Your holiness, we won't deny that will be hard times and the adversary will rise up against us. And we be seen, the chains are breaking. Jesus, your holiness, we won't deny in your situation, the chains are breaking. In this sanctuary, the chains are breaking. Chains are breaking in your relationship. The chains are breaking in your employment. The chains are breaking in your family. The chains are breaking in your finances. The chains are breaking in your mind. The chains are breaking in your body. Your chains are breaking. See, Jesus knows all about our struggles. Feel like 
life. We can't run on no more. We can run on a little while longer. He is our rescue. He is our strength. He is our help. See, he brought me out of the marriage club. He put my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in Larry's heart today. We can be simple. But we are to 
go in the example of Jesus. Love a mini high. Take a neighbor and say, Love a mini high. Love them till it hurts. And when you can't love on the body no more, you love on them again. We ain't got to tell everybody how much you've been hurt. Because we all been hurt. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. When we talked about it, the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you're mistreated, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And there's no greater joy than being wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus Christ. They're not going to take it easy on us simply because we go to HMBC. If they did it to Christ, what do you think they're going to do to us? But still, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You can talk about me, but God's got my back. You can stab me in the back, but God's got my back. You can call me every day for the child of God, but God has my back. And I'm going to love on you anyway. Because my blessings are not tied up in what you do. Our blessings are not tied up in what other folks do. It's how we respond to what they do. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not easily provoked. To the city, you don't keep no records of wrong. Love them anyhow. Love them anyhow. Love them anyhow. Say it again. Love them anyhow. Love them anyhow. Love them anyhow. Love them anyhow. I ain't been perfect, I hope. All right. But Jesus loved the vagabond like me. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He looked beyond my faults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was out in darkness, enjoying darkness, oh, yeah. he came and got me. Oh, yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. yes, he did. And even once, he picked me up. I got an assignment for you in New York. You need to get yourself together. But not only did he call me out of darkness, he called me into his service. He loved me. Even he loved me so much when I was at odds with him. I know y'all may not have this testimony, but I'm going to get mine anyway. He loved me when I was at odds with him. We don't even love folk that's at odds with us. And he called me out. He made me his child. And he put me with my brothers and my sisters. Because check this out, I'm going to leave you alone. Check it, I'm going to leave you alone. All of us got different moms. But we got the same dad. So we are brothers and sisters who are going to dwell together in unity. That doesn't mean we're always going to agree with us, one another. That doesn't mean we're always going to see eye to eye. 
love you anyhow. I'm going to love you in spite of the rich bitch dude. Because God chose to love me. And since the share, he forgave me of the multitude. He, he watched me whiter than snow. He cast my sins into the sea of forgetfulness. So because of that, I got gratitude. I got gratitude. I got gratitude. And I'm going to love you. Anyhow. Tell your neighbors, I'm going to love you. Anyhow. Tell your other neighbor, I'm going to love you. Anyhow. I'm going to love you. Anyhow. And guess what, Agent P.C.? Ain't nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. You're going to the church, bro.